Somebody once said that anything that is not nature is art. Well, actually, I reckon anything that isn't nature is, in fact, design or designed. Everything around us, everything from a pencil to a train to a window, has been designed in some way. Things don't just happen spontaneously. For every one of those objects, there's somebody like me, or Dick, that's actually got to do it, it's got the job. Richard Seymour and Dick Powell are two of Britain's leading industrial designers. Their job is to create the products that we buy and use without a second thought. Motorcycles are one of the house specialities. This is the Scorpion, designed for a company from the old East Germany, who wanted a bike that was modern, reliable and, above all, sexy. Every product, big or small, that comes out of their London studios gets the same treatment. From cordless kettles to electric guitars, their aim is to turn everyday objects into desirable machines. As we began to develop as designers, we began to realise that something funny was going on. One would design something that worked well and looked good and what have you, yet certain things were working instantaneously with people and certain things weren't. This is like a bright light. This is the grail at the centre of everything. How does one, if you like, engineer appeal? That thing that makes that one work and that one not. This X factor. That's what we get paid for here. Well, this is our battleground, if you want. This is where the money actually changes hands. This is where consumers get confronted with every conceivable kind of product. I mean, if we just zoom around and have a quick look. In my view, at least, you look along here, it's a sea of mediocrity. There are some individual, beautifully designed things, but there's this lack of identity, character, you know. When a consumer goes out to buy something, they look, bang, and they make a decision, first of all, and I like the look of that. Now, that's what we call X Factor, which is, I want that, I like it, now, what does it do, how much does it cost, and all of those other factors. So it's that immediate kind of, we want the product to leap off the shelf, we want it to appeal, actually, to most of the people. Equinox has been following Seymour Powell for the last nine months, as new designs develop from idea to reality. Watching them create products which they hope will have what it takes to become objects of desire. Well, today's big surprise has been the fact that BSA is back from the dead. BSA's old motorcycle name languished along with Triumph and Norton and a lot of the other names a uh, long time ago now. But the most extraordinary thing was that we opened the weekly motorcycle newspaper this week and lo and behold, here it is, BSA is back, but also, and by the way, Seymour Powell are going to be designing the motorcycles. So I think it's one of... Peter Kuros, who's the, who's the top guy at uh, MZ, I think it's one of his little practical jokes sometimes. He, sometimes he likes us to find out about things in a strange way. BSA's revival is thanks to a German company called MZ. BSA went out of business more than 20 years ago, but the classic British name still has value as a brand. MZ intends to use it for a new range of bikes, First off the production line will be a modern version of BSA's most successful bike ever, the Bantam. The original Bantam was a workhorse. It was just for commuting and it was like a first bike. But now we're in a market where we've got lots of fast little race replicas and what have you. So I guess the background has changed quite a lot. If we bring uh, something between sporty and, and, and commuter bike, uh, this should be okay because uh, this bike will, will and must be a big, huge volume bike. It must be also a bike for, uh, for deliveries in the city and so on and so on. Is that the brief? I think that's it, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Bye-bye.
And that was a standard issue, Peter Carter's brief. Very much verbal, nothing written down, uh, but very much to the spirit of what's required. The issue here with the BSA Bantam is we have to have a light, small, uh, inexpensive motorcycle which is suitable for first time users. We've got to have something that's got a good utility quality to it. We're going to have something that needs some image, some sportiness about it, so it's going to appeal to the younger market at the same time. So it's quite a tricky one, this one. Not every design project starts with such a clear brief. Dick and Richard approach some projects by staging what they call a creative event, a one-day brainstorming session aimed at generating entirely new product concepts. Well, good morning to everybody here. In the long term, what we at Seymour Power want to do is to generate concept projects, concept products. They table new ideas, new thinking, new innovation. So in short, they provide an insight into how the industry might develop. We're going to do that for household appliances. Let's move on to the rules. Now, these rules have been devised over the years. We do these kind of creative events for all of our clients, but today we're actually focusing on one of our clients, Tefal, who make home appliances. Typically, engineers and technicians tend to produce a new technology and try and wrap a product about, about that. What we're doing today is walking into the future, trying to stand where the consumer will stand, and drag product concepts towards that point. Again, I'm trying to be specific in terms of the problems that are associated with using appliances or the problems that are associated with house cleaning where there is not an appliance, perhaps, and you'd like to have one. So let me get my heading down first. You can think of the problems. The Baked moment. beans on the lid of the swing bin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. Like I'd like an odour-free self-cleaning bin. Okay. Sorry, next one. A toaster that keeps toast warm after it's cooked, so you can store pieces of warm toast while you're cooking the rest. Mm. This unrestrained thinking about the way products ought to be is a process Seymour Powell called future forging. The group is diverse. Consumers, engineers and journalists are as important in the mix as Tefal's managing director and his team, or the designers themselves. I'd like one, one base for lots of appliances. I'd like an ironing board that has all the right shapes for the clothes we wear. I'd like a vacuum cleaner that vacuums by itself. Ironing board, in other words, the one that changes shape That's according what to what you're actually. ironing. But yeah. There is something in this, and a lot of people have mentioned the problems of uh, yeah. ironing boards. An odour free self cleaning bin. I think there's something there in the bin. There is something around the bin, around isn't the there? Bin. Just put a ring around the bin. Uh, a one accessory food processor. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Food processor to put away or not. Same yeah. part of the same. same thing. A short list is drawn up Rubbish from the pressure. best of the morning's ideas. During the afternoon, the group is split into two competing teams to develop these ideas further. Is the base going to be a base with a motor in it, for instance? No, it's or a heating element, or is it just going to be a power source? Just a power source. Like like you said, cool. solving cool. Here. You're solving the fact that you need all the wires. I think there's a flaw in this, mm -hmm. which is that you've got moist steam cooking, and yep. yet you're saying you're going to get browning and crisping on the top layer. Mm. How are you going to do well, that in a moist absolutely. environment? Because here we are looking for something that is, is a, an advance from existing food processes. Yeah, yeah. First of all, you have a bowl, which is slightly inverted. So basically you end up with a, with, a, with a jug which is much easier to clean. It doesn't have all that chimney business in the middle. It Between them, the two groups squared. come up with more than 20 new product concepts for Tefal in less than three hours. The next step will be to choose the most promising of them, design it, and perhaps push it all the way into production. Just bring the top like you do on a fryer at the moment. So. Glory days, sort of thing that makes grown men weep. A lot of this stuff is representative of when Britain was really being innovative in motorcycle design. But I want to know for sure. Come on. Bantams. First thing to notice about this is this is incredibly slender, lightweight construction. The other thing, there's other character components. For instance, there are side panels. Now, the side panel, as we know it in a modern motorcycle, is virtually gone. And most importantly, we can look at this on the back. 
you know, a rack. This thing's built to carry stuff. This thing is actually built as a utility vehicle. So we're going to be quite keen on seeing if we can just revisit a little bit of that. But we have to be careful to distill, bring out of these things what really are the personality aspects and not get all dewy-eyed about it. Many thousands of BSA motorcycles are in use in public service all over the world. In Britain, smart post office messenger boys deliver telegrams by red enameled bantams. Lucky lads. Probably there are more bantams running about all over the world than any other motorcycle. And they're used for many... You only ever have one shot at bringing something back from the dead. You know, a lot of people have tried these things in the past and then have stumbled at the first fence. It adds a certain, how can I put it, um, frisson to the to the project when you realize all the time that if you if you get this one wrong it's not just the fact that a lot of people are going to be out of work but you could be per partially responsible for dumping a you know something very very important like a brand name so um you have to take a deep breath before you start wild thing i think i love you but i want to know for sure Did you know that BSA are coming back? Uh, they're attempting to come back, yes. It would be a disaster. You think it should stay dead? It should stay dead. What about if you brought back a new pro? Hasn't got the investment. Reviving the BSA Bantam will not be easy. The new bike will have to be sexy enough to appeal to its target market, first-time buyers, but retain enough of the original's character to convince the aficionados that it is indeed still a BSA. They, they, were sort of, they weren't very glamorous. They were sort of nice well-made, so. solid. And I think if you have to relaunch it, you must have to relaunch it as a, a sports, semi-sports bike again, like you've done with the truck. This BSA name is a bit of a time bomb here. We're not really sure, you know, is it good? Can we bring it back? Can it be brought back in a credible way? We don't bring back something that breaks down, but if we can bring back something that needs looking after, that's got a lot of metal on it, surfaces, something that's modern, but at the same time has got some of that innate personality, then that's what we've really got to get towards. So it's our job then to extract this DNA. You know, we've got to pull it out. There's the basic concept as it came out of the creative event. But what I'd like to do is just make a list of priorities, what's really important. So power base, one of the beauties... Dick has decided on an idea from the creative event that's derived from the cordless kettle principle. It's an electric power base, which can be used by any kitchen appliance designed to fit onto it. So all we need is a way of winding it, so... Can we not revolve it round on a turntable or something? Like an extension lead, actually wrap it in. Yeah, just do it like that. The first appliances he will design for the base are a cordless food processor and a new kettle. The emphasis is on making the technology disappear. The kettle will not seem to have an element because the conventional metal coil will be replaced by a flat metal plate. Final thoughts on accessories. But most of their effort will go into designing an entirely new kind of food processor. Whenever we design a food processor, we never get the chance to design the bowl. But actually, 90% of the problems are here in the way that you use it. Why? Well, if we just have a quick look, it's enormously difficult to clean. And you've got things like this bit in the middle, which actually we'd rather not have. It's difficult to clean, the edges are sharp, and so on. Then, when you come to put the top on, it only goes on one way. Then you've got the, the double problem of you've got to get this on, right? Now, how do you do that? It'll only go on in... I know the position, of course, because I worked in the design. I wonder, I wonder even if I can do it. You know, you've then got to slide... No, there you are. There's the problem, you know. You can't actually get it to fit on. If we could get rid of that but still have a bottom drive, I think we'd have a better overall solution. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why not a blender drive? Where sealed we've unit. sealed unit at the bottom, okay. right, which transfers the drive from the outside to the inside, but which is still easy to clean and has minimum encroachment into the bowl. Yeah. So I've, I've been pursuing that. And looking at the bowl itself, obviously that now means we've no longer got a super flat interior. We're going to have to bow that up. And that shape is actually quite good because it throws the liquid down into the knife. Here we have a bowl which is completely clean on the inside, no chimney. That would be our target. I'm not saying we can do it, but it's our target. 
very easy to clean. You can put it on in any position ostensibly. It doesn't, it's not sensitive because of the interlock isn't there, because we've put the interlock in the lid, and we've got a pedal. Press the pedal, it opens automatically, so you get immediate access into pouring ingredients in and so on. Well, we know the starting point. We've got an engine, so we've got a four-stroke modern 125cc motor, probably 17-inch wheels at the front and the back. We were going to have a reasonably lazy fork angle. The design of any new motorbike begins with the technical package. The Bantam's basic structure is governed by its wheelbase, its suspension layout, and above all, its 125cc engine. But one of the things I was talking to Al Melling about on the engine design was he's making all of the engines stressed. Really? Yeah. From the word go? Yeah. Mm. So we can, if we want to, we can put the full front end off the barrel, off the top of the head. Yeah. Then the only, you know, we've got a chassisless motorcycle. Is it the case that if we made it a chassisless bike, immediately, not just compared to the Scorpion, compared to everything else on the market in recent years, this new BSA Bantam has something special about it. Well, that is personally, if we can possibly move it in that direction, that's what I would want to do. Most new bikes here. use off-the-shelf Japanese engines, but the Bantam's oh, engine will be designed and built from scratch in Britain. This means it can be made strong enough to be a structural part of the bike, replacing all or part of the usual metal frame. If they can do it, the Bantam will be lighter, cheaper to manufacture, and unique amongst modern motorbikes. We know how the side panel used to be the sort of... The, the side panels virtually disappeared on the motorcycle of today, hasn't yeah. it? What if we, you know, made the side panel the most important part of the whole thing? Yeah, that would be a nice play on history. And what we could have is we could have a seat mm. that hinges up mm -hmm. and becomes the back rack. Mm. Well, we've got no chassis, and we've got a lot more functionality. Yeah. And it looks quite swoopy as well. Oh. I wonder if it looks too swoopy. It can never be too swoopy. Wild thing, I think I love you. Work has begun on the basic structure of the new Bantam. The bike's shape and styling haven't yet been decided, but already some major technical decisions are being made. The engine itself will be the structural link between the front and rear ends, and the top parts of the bodywork will be supported by load-bearing triangular side panels mounted directly onto the engine. What we've done with the Bantam is we've evolved it so that it can be made in a series of different ways. We can, in fact, make the design that we've done in the most advanced way that we want to do. We can make these two structural side panels do the job. Or we can also bend a whole bunch of tubes and do it that way. Now, I'm going to push for the Sparty Pants way of doing it because I think it's cheaper and the advanced design actually makes the thing better. But if they decide not to build it that way, I don't have to go off and cry into my beer because the conceptual integrity is gone. This way around, I know we can get there. The food processor has also made progress. It's no longer on the drawing board. Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the first experimental model. Let's just try it, because it's going to be this way around. Well, it's not bad for a first hit, actually. I'm quite pleased with it. Mm -hmm. Rich, yeah. do you want to have a look at this? Interested to hear what you think. So when you press the pedal down, this, this pops up. Good. I think with, what about the footprint? Well, it's getting a bit long, isn't it? You think it's too long? We're using the back there to store the accessories, so it's, it's, it's longer. My feeling would be, I think it could do with a bigger bowl. Eight? What do you think? Because you've worked on the bowl capacity, I don't think it looks big enough for bowl, do you? What we try and do is we try and set up a target but in the process of analysing all the variables that influence that product, the whole thing can fall apart. Now, this, this process of, of keeping things going is, is a bit like spinning plates in, in a circus. If you think of the plate spinner, one of these plates is ergonomics, one is easy clean, one is the bowl capacity, one is X factor, how's it going to look? 
all of these things are equal or near equal importance. And if you spin the technical engine package one like mad and try and sort that problem out, all these other plates fall off their sticks. So what you've got to do is you've got to try and nudge and keep in mind all of those things all of the time. We may have to, Dave, one thing we might consider is moving the motor off to one side. Um, would allow us perhaps to shorten it because we wind space down right. the side. So maybe we should consider yeah. taking the storage out of there and putting it in there. So that it, there's no X factor yet, and, and nor would we expect to have X factor. If you look at the, pro the whole process of, of design and, and how designers think, think of it like as if you've seen an explosion on film, run backwards very slowly. What you see is a whole load of dust and rubbish and bits and pieces all floating about in the air. And as you wind the film back, it goes very quickly and the design is finished we're, we're we're not right up in the very top of the dust layer at the moment in the sequence we're only about probably a third of the way down so that snapping together of the whole thing into the right object hasn't happened yet This is the birth of a motorbike, or rather of several. With the basic structure established, the next step is to generate concepts for the shape of the new Bantam, all emphasizing the utility of the bike and trying to evoke its long history while still producing a desirable machine. I think the only concern I've got about this work I've been doing is that if we take the badge off... <laughs> Is it, is it a BSA? Is it a BSA? So what are we actually trying to say? Bantam is light, mm. so Bantam has to look light. Mm. Bantam is simple, mm. so Bantam has to look simple. Sure. And I guess Bantam is British. So how much of <laughs> how much of that do we pull out? But I wanna know for sure. Right, here at the National Motorcycle Museum in Birmingham, and we're here to meet owners, BSA owners, from the BSA Owners Club. We're about halfway through the concept stage. We're going to bounce the ideas off, see if they think it's like BSA, or if not, what their ideas are. It's like we're off. This engine is an air-cooled engine, and something else is that it's so strong physically that a lot of what was the frame of the motorcycle doesn't have to be there anymore. So basically, the engine can form part of the chassis it can actually replace part of it. Now, we played around so far with almost completely replacing the chassis with just using the engine, but there's practi good practical reasons for not doing that. Let's look at this one. Now then, we have a big, comfy, two-up saddle, lots of room. Here we've got a cast rack which comes out of the back here, so you've always got loads of room to carry stuff. Now, what we've got here is this isn't just a side paddle, this is actually a structural part of the bike. In doing so, we're not sure yet how retro that actually makes the bike feel. Could I just ask you guys, first of all, do you think that this is a modern motorcycle that you're looking at? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. now, is this a Bantam? The egg-shaped egg side here of the engine yeah. is certainly Bantamish. The styling, the seating isn't. No. Mm -hmm. It's no. it's to, to use as it's too modern, so to speak. Too modern mm -hmm. for a bantam. That's mm -hmm. what I believe. Yeah, too modern for people that are used to the original. Bantam. Yeah. Um, is it not simple mm -hmm. enough yet, Malcolm? I think it's quite complex, actually. Mm -hmm. It's almost over sophisticated. Right. Right. Too That's sophisticated what I feel. For a bantam. That's yeah. what I feel. Yeah. Right. Here is another one. It's actually very similar to what you've seen. Mm -hmm. Is this more like a bantam <clears throat> or is this less like a bantam? Well, colour-wise, it's more like a bantam, and uh, mm -hmm. the tank style is more more like a that, that area. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I would say that, you know, that this fiendish triangle, you know, the, the side uh, panel, is one of the secret weapons in this. Is it's that, clever, actually. Well, it, uh, not how it's actually made, but the very fact is that you, you're you accustomed to, I think you're very That's used true. to, that kind of a construction. Yeah. Yeah. I think that bike looks great. I might even buy one myself. Good gracious. My dear chap. No, I think it looks excellent. Yeah. That, is, uh, that is really yeah. the, the business, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that was interesting. I mean, we put in ideas there that were particularly what we thought were traditional, and they didn't go with them. But they did go for the ones that we wanted them to go with, which were the modern iterations of the more traditional approach. So, feels good. The only problem we've got now is we've got eight weeks to get the whole damn thing sorted out. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, although we're uh, already absolutely up to our eyeballs with work, happily enough, we've had a just recently had a call from a very big Indian manufacturing company called TVS Suzuki, uh, who build basically an awful lot of scooters, and they want us to design a new large-wheeled scooter for them. I have been given the task of going over to India, not only to take a, an explicit brief from the client, but also in a fairly short space of time to gather as much information as I can on the local culture, on how people use scooters, the reasons that they buy them, styling trends, everything that one would usually require before beginning a project like this. One of the other motorcycles, well, motorcycles, the other scooters that we see a lot of are this classic uh, kind of Vespa Lambretta. See, what you are seeing here mm. is probably one of the largest selling vehicles in the country. And probably in the world. Uh, Indian markets is selling about 100,000 scooters per month. 100,000 a month? Scooters a month. Amazing. Right? Absolutely amazing. And uh, among the 100,000 scooters, this design of Vespa mm. is probably selling the maximum. So certainly to my eyes, it looks very old fashioned this kind of very uh, rounded, segmented form. In India, these kind of models mm. are little classic mm -hmm. and traditional. Whereas, if you want to have a speed, power and style, curves, curves mm. are not so. No, curves are not curves stylier. are not fashionable. They're Straight not line mm. and angular designs. Really? Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Completely the opposite. For example, you have seen this as a classical design. The most interesting design in India today is probably the scooty. You look at this uh, front yeah. here, it is definitely sharper. So these kind of things are accepted as modern young mm -hmm. in and, India. And I've heard this word sleek. It was uh, sleek. Is, is that a definition of sleekness? Yes. Kind of sharp line. Definitely, right? definitely. I gather that um, the cost of the raw material is one of your most expensive, one of the most expensive portions of the scooter. Because we did talk about changing the single spine maybe to a twin spark, but it's a balance if we start using more That's material. Right. Yeah. We, we actually, while designing, we have to take care of that aspect to make sure that the strength and rigidity is maintained, mm -hmm. but still use as little material as possible. Everybody carries stuff. It's uh, very clear that we're going to have to give, make sure there's a lot of space on the footboard. Everybody carries stuff from just their briefcase or shopping bags to big sacks and stuff. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, I was kind of told that there was a difference between the roads in the country compared to the town, but you can see when the, when the scooters come wandering along, through these kind of ruts, suspensions banging up and down, the thing's getting shaken to pieces. How anybody can drive along with their whole family and uh, laden down with packages on this stuff, it becomes very clear that they, the bikes have to be constructed very, very toughly to withstand this kind of punishment. My God, it's been a completely extraordinary few days here, having to in such a short space of time, um, cram everything in, understand something about the culture, understand something about the client company itself, how they manufacture things, what their limitations are. And in a lot of ways, what makes it so exciting is that it's, uh, it should be a new blend of vehicles, a kind of two-wheeler that they, they haven't really had in this market or any other before. Um, it's a bit motorcyclish, a bit scooterish. it's got a bit of moped in it. Um, a lot of other details that we'll have to bear in mind, but in principle the concept is new, so it's going to be very exciting. Right, well, here we are. It's this stage we're now into the foam on a scrap chassis. Thank you.
Wow. <laughs> well, somewhere inside this lump of, of foam lurks the actual final design of the bike. This looks pretty promising. For me, certainly, this is the second most exciting part of any motorcycle development because the first one is when you get the sketch just right and you get that spirit. But the second one is when you've got to encounter this huge thing and then start to carve the, the shape out. So I'm quite pumped up about this, I have to say. Don't try this at home, kids. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why, it's almost like being in love. There's a smile Especially for the cat. <laughs> it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Using an existing scooter as a reference point, Nick and Richard are beginning to develop ideas for the new Indian two-wheeler. The main aim is to design a scooter that can carry large loads, people and goods. Well, there's a good opportunity for the chassis here, because we can run the chassis as a perimeter. Then we've got this primary defence area. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what are the most likely things? You imagine this is bumper height. Sure. Yeah, but so I do like the idea of having um, something fairly structural so that if a child is standing inboard of that and the thing goes over. Their approach is to run the scooter's chassis around both sides of the bike rather than down the centre, which gains them valuable space and simultaneously <laughs> makes the structure stronger and possibly safer for passengers. The only problem I can see with this twin spar arrangement may be weight. You know, every gram that we add to this, unless it's fully justified, is going to slow it down. Well, what's it going to add? What, a kilo? Not even that, I wouldn't think, really. Because I mean, that's the thing always amazing. We add a kilo to that, and then we add 40 kilos of bananas and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we could even bring the chassis to you. All the way around. So yeah. that you have something that limit, you know, so mum doesn't fall off the well, back. Or... But again, that's absolutely, absolutely necessary. You know, do you probably. see people carrying long things at all? Yeah. They do, yes they do. What if we said that the, the rear seat yeah. came up also to that position, mm -hmm. so you could sit here mm -hmm. with this open here and it would, it would form a back yeah. restraint. Then this is hollow mm -hmm. and something really long, mm -hmm. you know, whatever they're trying to carry, these yeah. poles and mm -hmm. what have you, could actually slip in like yeah. that and then be secured around, you know, we could put a strap around there or something, so it's secured on there. Let's have a look, where's the kettle? Mm. Hey, terrific. It's great. Hello. Hey. Wow. What an improvement, eh? Terrific. How does it feel? Can we pick it up? Yeah. Yeah. The foam models of the food processor and kettle are in their fourth and last generation. It's taken four months to get here. Now the designs will be frozen and non-working but otherwise realistic prototypes will be made. God, that's such an improvement. Terrific. It looks much more cohesive, doesn't it? Much more of an overall form. Well, that's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be a winning concept, I'm sure about that. Can't wait to see it finished. <laughs> Can we just walk away from it a bit to get it? I tell you what, that bowl is not as um, big as I thought it was going to be. It's actually quite nice being clear, and when we get the contrast of the grey, yeah. so it looks absolutely demon to me here, doesn't it? Demon. Well, that was absolutely amazing. Delighted. Terrific. I mean, it's exactly what we wanted. Everything was... The whole thing's just taken a leap from where it was before. You've got to remember, we were looking at a foam model and a set of drawings and a rendering, and suddenly the whole thing crisps up, and bingo. I mean, we're really happy. Hardly anything to change. The deadline for completing the Bantam design is getting dangerously close. Richard's foam cutout of the body shape has been remodelled in clay for detailed work on the styling. Have you got some bits and bobs? We could try for a... to do the fasteners on it. Peter Kouros, MZ's managing director, is due to arrive early this afternoon to see the design for the first time. If he doesn't like it, 
they will have to start again from scratch. Yeah. It's extraordinary, the change. Just that extra utility looking. For sure, isn't it? So we'll get this sort of, like the rivets on an aeroplane, it's going to be pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, very strong. Well, in every project you get the stress points, and we've got one now. Mr. Corus has not turned up. He has not come for the presentation. He hasn't come for the presentation because he's had to go to the United States. So, um, we haven't been able to present the clay to him today, even though the clay is completely finished. When you're working so hard for something, as long as the, the, the point stays there, it's OK. But in a situation like this, where the goalposts are moving all the time, and where time scales are shifting, it's very, very nerve wracking. Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. Every life we have some trouble. As usual, I'm sitting here trying to get um, actually quite a lot of work done in two days when we're supposed to be leaving to go and visit the client in India, I'll try and get some concert work that actually makes some sense finished. Be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Every life we have some trouble, but when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. In some ways, it's a bit mad. We really haven't had enough time to fully get the thing designed, but um, in a lot of ways, I think it's going to be useful to at least let them give an initial steer. Certainly, the guys from marketing will give us a, a very good view on the layout of the bike that we're proposing and the general look of it, whether that's what they think will sell. So, in the first place, we looked at having uh, moving away from the single central spine and actually building a kind of uh, very simple but very strong cage. Um, it means if the bike goes over or uh, even if somebody is driven into kind of a crash guard, so they, they have a crash guard, okay? What this means is that we then have a, a, a natural kind of basket in this, in this floor area here, where already you have something that you can throw a big bag into. Uh, if this box has a hole at the front, maybe a panel that comes up, which could also be the child seat, maybe we can bring very long things mm -hmm. all the way through here. Uh, so he can, floor, he can right. carry a cane. He'll be able to use nearly the whole length of the scooter uh, to put stuff through. One of the things that also occurred to us again is there any possibility that we could make this, um, although it's a scooter, give it's it kind, kind of the flavor of the motorcycle, OK? Structurally, it can... I am not very comfortable with structurally, because I think the whole thing, when it moves, the whole thing is taken the shock of mm. But try, try not to think so much in detail. It's more the, f the feeling of, uh, yeah. is there any merit in having this big open space? You lose the step through space, but you get more space. The thing that's is, space. if I can just go through all of these, yeah. every drawing has something that's good, something that's, that's nice. maybe not so good. At the end of it, we can go through them all. OK, let's, let's move on a bit so we can, uh, we can try and finish this. We've already been an hour on that, perhaps. The yes. two of reference models are this. Yeah. And that probably. Okay. Some kind of reference models. Mm -hmm. Because it may be too bulky and sure. style sizes are big. Yeah. But it's only a line of thinking. Yeah, basically the same. Basically Somebody this. Sure. Sure. Can you find yeah. an application of this which is different from all those? Yeah. <clears throat> bit of a long one that was, but um, very constructive, very useful. Uh, sometimes it's quite difficult if you have very large numbers of people to keep the thing to the point, keep it moving on. One gentleman in particular, although he was making some useful points, made them rather too often, so, um, but that wasn't a problem. From here we can go forward, and um, I certainly have a much clearer idea of where we should go with the, the next stage, and that was the point of this meeting, so it's been very useful. It's evident from the visuals and some of the stuff. Well, Nick's back, he's off the critical list, and we have a result, it would appear. Um, locked up in these three pictures which we've got here, it would appear is going to be the future of what TVS's new scooter is going to be all about.
It's been five months since Seymour Powell staged the creative event for Tefal, and it's time for the acid test. This is the first chance for Tefal's managing director and his team to inspect the new food processor and kettle and decide whether to take them any further. Now I'm going to start with the power base itself. The power base is round and we've chosen you know, a 360 connector which we think is critical because you have to be able to orientate it in a particular way. Yes? And this power base is common to a complete line of electrical appliances. On the back there is a cord rewind which allows you to shorten the cord to wherever you want. Oh, really? Okay, That would be a modular part which T-File would sell with every product. Now the kettle that goes on there, what we call the thermo kettle, is this. Now I think the first thing to take out of this is it's very different. We were something after something that is much more like a jug. Quieter, cleaner, a little bit more sophisticated. You can take it to the table. But it does have a double cavity wall with insulation between. And inside, it's completely clean with the flat plate. Now let's look at the Food Pro. Now there's a lot of, lot of different features and things on this which I'd like to talk about. From a user point of view, if you want to gain access to what you're doing, just like on our fryers, you press the pedal and the lid comes up. So you've got immediate access to putting in different accessories and so on. What do you think about the fact that you can do that? I think the base is good. There's an interesting concept here. One could think of other products that could uh, uh, work with this space as well. Uh, it's definitely something that uh, we'd want to pursue. Okay. That wasn't too bad, was it? No, how do you think it went? Well, it's, it's, t it's absolutely typical, you know. You, you present something and you want people to absolutely go mad about it, say, isn't it wonderful? And what actually happens is, of course, they have a very measured response and you know, so you, I feel a bit, a bit down about it, but I know Greg very well, and actually, I think he actually really likes them. But that's, yeah. I think, yeah. it's the normal response, really. So. Yeah, when you put your life and soul yeah. into something, it absolutely, <laughs> you know, destro destroys you. Right, let's go. Peter Kuros from MZ still hasn't seen and approved the Bantam design, but the deadline is tight, so the team has had to carry on. The body shell has already been cast in fiberglass, and Peter Kuros will now have to inspect the finished model. Well, it's late Friday afternoon now. We have exactly a week to get this thing finished, ready to be presented to the boss men. The pieces that I'm working on now are just all the little fiddly pieces, which really tie the bike together. I mean, as from, from Monday onwards, we're going to be working throughout the night living on pizzas and McDonald's, which uh, kind of gets to you in the end. Well, it's all over now, and uh, we're all pretty tired, but very, very, very pleased with the outcome. And everyone who's worked on it now has decided that as soon as it goes into production, they want one. And we're just ecstatic, to be quite honest. It's very good. So far, the food processor and kettle have only been seen by Tefal. But if they are to go into production, they will have to survive in a competitive world. The designs may be ingenious, but do they have X factor? Right, well, there you are. What's reaction? my reaction? My reaction is it's different. It's very radically different. Um, colours, obviously, very new. Um, my first reaction is I like it. Good. If I'm just from a consumer's point Good. of view, I like it. Okay. It's a product that takes us into the next century. You feel that, yeah? I feel Good. that. Yeah. It's not an old traditional design just updated. This is something radically new. Now I need to show you the other one. Okay. Bear in mind that the power base is common to both. Right. All right. Okay. Top line reaction. Wow, it's again it's pretty different. It's obviously in the same sort of family as, mm -hmm. as the kettle. So do you think um, it's enough to stop a consumer who's walking along here? Honest answer? Yeah. No. Yeah, I do. Oh, you do? Good. I do. Good. 
these are brave designs. So I don't expect them to come to market as they are, because I'm sure that in the development process things will have to be changed and prices will vary and things will be taken out because of price and so on. But broadly, I'm absolutely confident that a lot of the, the, the features and the details and in fact the overall look of some of these products you will find in the market in two to three years time. At last, Peter Kouros has arrived from MZ to see the finished Bantam model <laughs> and hopefully approve the design. First impression? Not too bad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. You come out here, Peter. <coughs> what we've got, very, very light construction. The first way of doing it is in a completely conventional tubular sense with a chassis running along the top. Mm -hmm. The second one, which is the one I favour, is that all of this side panel area is structural. It's a steel box section. Mm -hmm. And then all we've got to do, because that will then support the passenger, is a single tube which runs across there. Mm -hmm. But here's the really tricky bit. <laughs> now this is in its luggage mode. This comes off. And the biggest rack and luggage carrying system in Christendom. <laughs> Is it a BSA? Yeah, it looks like. You remember it's still a model, Peter, so. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. That <laughs> <laughs> was delivered. Was that more dramatic? Yeah. Good job, it's not Over to you. The first time we ever presented anything to Peter Kuros was the Scorpion, and we showed it, and he went, oh, it's not too bad. Well, effectively, that's probably the highest compliment Peter can ever actually give to something. And we've got the same reaction again. We're very pleased. I'm delighted and relieved, I have to say, of the positive nature of his reaction to what we've got. In parallel with the Bantam's appearance model, They've also built a fully working engineering prototype, which is used to check the bike's dynamics. The prototype does have a partial chassis, but the tests confirm that the production version could still be built either with or without one. Dynamically, it's about right. We're getting about 60 miles an hour out of this funny little bike, which is very good. The riding position's comfy. It's got the right balance of cuteness to quality to... It's got that feeling of old-fashionedness, but it's modern and they're in about the right balance. And you never know when you've got it right until the very last moment when all those bits come together. And so to actually open the doors and see the thing and get that first burst, that's what the customer gets. That's what the customer gets, that first nanosecond, that X factor. Well, I'm not exactly target market, but I've got enough of that inside me to say, I think we're getting pretty close here. I'm pretty chuffed with it. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why, it's almost like being in love. There's a smile on my face for the whole human race. Why, it's almost like being in love. All the music of life seems to be like a bell that is ringing for me and from the way that i feel when that bell starts to peal i would swear i was falling swear i was falling why it's almost like being in love of life seems to be like a bell that is ringing for me and from the way that i feel when well, that bell starts to peel i would swear i was falling swear i was falling why it's almost like being in love 